What's up guys, it's AJ from A79 Prospecting. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to build your very own kiln at home for less than $30. That way, you can smelt your gold and precious metals at home without spending a fortune doing it. Let's get started. So why would you wanna build your own kiln at home? Why don't you just go out and buy one? It's because they're really expensive. The cheapest one that I found was over a hundred bucks. And then as you get bigger, they get progressively more expensive, 300, 700, over a thousand dollars really quick. And I figured I could do it better and faster and probably wouldn't be too hard if I just bought the materials myself. And you don't need a lot of stuff to do it. We're using basic landscaping bricks here. You can use as many as you want, depending on how big you want to make your kiln. We also need two masonry bricks with holes in them. And the reason why is we're gonna use these holes to pass the tip of our map gas or propane furnace inside. Now the problem with using these type of bricks is that they don't do a really good job at high heat. Eventually they're gonna crack. So you need something to insulate and keep all the heat inside. And what you can do for that is buy this type of insulation. This cost about $20 on Amazon and it withstands temperatures up to 2400 degrees. This is the most important thing. When these bricks are lined with this, you can customize it to the size and depth and shape that you want to make it. So what we did was I put a flat piece in the base. I cut two long pieces here, and then I cut two pieces off to the side with a little hole in it. And that hole connects to the inside of the brick here. So this way we can pass the tip of our torch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one end over here, one end over here, and then you can put uh, whatever you're gonna um, melt or smelt in the middle here. And then you need something to cover it on top. So all I did was just created this on top with a little hole in it. Looks exactly like what you'd buy online, right? All of this, cost 30 bucks and I bet it'll work as well as the one that's $600. We do need to buy a couple of additional things that you would need for any setup even if you bought it online. So first you need the gas that will heat the furnace up. You can use either propane or map gas. Map gas burns hotter so it's a great great choice but it's also about three times more expensive than propane. This is about three to four dollars a can. This is about eleven dollars a can. So pick what you want to use. We're going to go ahead and use map gas for the higher heat. You're going to need some fireproof gloves. That's very, very important. You're going to be working with molten metal. So make sure you protect yourself. We're going to use this small graphite mold here that we're going to use to melt the gold and then you need something that you're gonna pour it into. So we're gonna to try to make a small gold bar today. So we're gonna use one of these, and then you're gonna need a pair of tongs, and this is gonna be used to pick this up and pour it into the mold. It's also important to have a good flux. Uh, today, we're just gonna use regular old borax. Borax is gonna do a couple of things for us. First, it's gonna lower the melting point of gold, so it makes it easier to smelt. Second, it's gonna remove some of the oxides in the gold, so it's gonna purify the gold a little bit as well. Lastly, it's gonna make the gold thinner, so it's gonna be easier to pour into the mold. Lastly, of course, you need some gold. So we have about uh, 10 to 11 grams here of plaster gold, just little uh, gold dust that uh, I'm not gonna do anything with. So might as well melt it and have a little fun. Um, and this is a little experiment I was working with earlier. This is about a one gram bead of gold. So um, together, all this combined should be about 10 and a half grams of gold. <clears throat> to start off, we're gonna take a generous pinch of borax and put it in the graphite mold. Mm, very good. Next, we're gonna take our gold and pour it into the graphite mold. There we go, it's all in there. And we have a little stirring spoon here. We're just gonna mix it all together a little bit. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. All right, we're gonna take our gold in the mold. We're gonna put it right in the middle there. It's nice and stable and we'll go ahead and turn the gas on. Okay. 
Well, that didn't take very long. The gold got molten in about five minutes, so this thing is working like a beast. I'm going ahead and warming up the uh, mold that we're gonna use, and hopefully we'll get a nice little bar. Well, the first attempt actually almost went perfectly, ran into one unexpected problem. I ran out of gas in one of my map gas tanks. And so when I went to get it, I kind of freaked out and I tried to pour it, as you saw, into the mold, but it was starting to harden up. So then I just dumped it in, uh, I just dumped it and, and made a little bead and threw that into the water. And uh, I actually made a beautiful glass sculpture in the process with the uh, borax. <laughs> but the gold melted really, really quickly. So. This wasn't a furnace issue, this was a uh, AU-79 issue. <laughs> so, uh, take two, let's get that bar, baby. All right, so I put the nice little bead that I formed back into the graphite mold. Let's do it again. All right, we're back in business, baby. Let's see if we can knock off some of that slag here, but uh, that's a nicely formed little gold bar. Very cool. All right, well, not too bad. The pour went okay. I was hesitating a little bit because it was the first time I did it and I was a little nervous, but uh, it went pretty well, so can't complain too much. Let's go ahead and get that gold clean up by throwing it into our tumbler and see what it looks like in the end. So we've got our Lortone tumbler here that we've used that several times and has been great to polish up gold. We got we filled the tumbler with about uh, about halfway with water, a couple drops of soap, our tumbling media here. And then whatever we want to tumble in this case, our gold bar. Let's give it about 30 minutes and we'll take a look and see what our final product is. After about 30 minutes in the tumbler, here is the result. Take a look at that. That is awesome. That is shiny and it is beautiful. Now let's take this gold bar and get it analyzed with a $30,000 XRF machine and see how pure it is. All right, we just made it to our local pawn shop. Let's go ahead inside and get that gold bar analyzed and see how pure it is and what other metals might be naturally alloyed with it. Well, they didn't let me film indoors, but I was able to take a screenshot. I'll put that up right now. Now, this is interesting. The bar came in at just under 22 carats. It was approximately 91% gold and 9% silver with a small amount of iron in it. Now that video was a ton of fun to make. The next step will be to take that gold bar and purify it up to hopefully over 99% pure with aquaregia. But that's another video for another day. My focus right now is to get more gold <laughs> so we can make a bigger bar. Next week, I'm gonna go ahead and release my first gold prospecting video of the year. We're gonna test out two new products, a killer new classifier made by Arbor Fabricators, and we're gonna also take advantage of some awesome water flow by running our pater through a gold hog stream sluice. 
You might even find a little surprise along the way. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. A uh, special thank you to all my Patreon supporters, and a special shout out to Philip Boyd, uh, who's my latest Patreon supporter. So thank you, Philip, for your support, uh, and thank all of you guys for watching my videos. Until next time, peace out.